just have a two minute clip that I wanted to play. And if anybody wanted to give a comment, it's a two minute clip on an NFL quarterback that uses neurofeedback. He's used it for 10 years and they're doing a show on Netflix. It launched yesterday and I'm trying to get this out there to help, you know, connect the dots and then I'll connect your video to, to this uh, as well. Uh, let's see if we can get this thing to play. Um, you can't afford to know it pretty well. It has to be locked in. You've got to get to a place where it's just instinctual. And that takes a whole nother level of commitment and work to get there. I've been doing neurofeedback for over a decade. Jay, is that the 1020 paste he's putting on there? Yeah, that is his classical uh, paste electrodes. And is and, that the uh, spot? He's plugging, he's plugging it into uh, a headband as a custom location. Uh, some headbands have built-in electrodes for only uh, areas that are on the headband, uh, but this allows you to place an electrode. And uh, and uh, obviously he's been trained where to place it. It would appear to me that that's a CZ placement. I mean, we don't. We can't see it perfectly, but yeah. it looks like that top dead center, you know. Yeah. All right. You're trained to be at its its absolute best. The beautiful thing about the training is, you just kind of let it happen. As long as you can set it up and devote the time to it, the training itself does the work for you. You just watch the video. Whenever the sound cuts out or the screen were to shrink or the screen were to dim, and in this case, most of the time the screen dims, it's correcting your brain, it's instructing your brain that the electrical activity on your brain is not where it should be to be focused. It's kind of giving it that reminder to go back to that place of focus. And so it helps keep my brain where I want it to be. It's a bit abstract. So if he's, if he's doing CZ training for focus, this is probably a theta suppression and beta enhancement. Uh, the theta beta ratio, a classic measurement of attention. Uh, and if he's working on intentional focus, uh, learning the theta beta ratio control ends up giving a great deal of assistance on that. Um, uh, the, there are other, uh, not quarterbacks looking for focus, but linemen looking for less impulsivity uh, they could be doing the same location with SMR uh, okay. to cut down on their explosivity, impulsivity, so they're not jumping off sides or something. But uh, it, it looks like he's doing CZ for focus, which would, again, probably be a theta beta. But they could have designed this based on a, an entire cap, yeah. 19 electrodes, and found the right spot. So not everybody is going to be a CZ location. Well, maybe he's got one. Let's see. But in my position as a quarterback, which is so cerebral and requires so much focus, I think it has a lot of merit. I still remember looking at the map of our brain on the computer together when we were dating. <sighs> I think everyone should do it, especially athletes, especially quarterbacks, to train your brain to stay calm. Jay, what kind of cap is that? Because I got it wrong. So that, that's an electro cap international. Uh, it's called a surgical cap or a surgy cap. It's got a little bit more elastic around the perimeter. It doesn't have ear, uh, chin strap, chin strap and chest strap attachment because they use it for carotid and arterectomy surgery. You can't have straps going by where they're wanting to cut in. So th this kind of a cap was used for surgical uh, procedures, but it's a very good cap. You can see it's actually placed really nicely on him, the FP1, FP2, the plane of them. Uh, it's, it's not... Uh, the wrong size it's a blue cap which is a large um but you know it's it's, right. it's for his head size and so, there's little holes there that's where the saline gets squirted in to get yeah the, and you know, then you can see the ear clip electrode uh the the cap he's got it's a tin electrode on his ear so it's tin electrodes on the cap uh, uh the same cap can come in a much more expensive version with silver chloride if you're looking to do, you know, DC or slow particle work, but um, the uh, this is in tin, which is a perfectly appropriate metal for routine recording. Uh, the Electrocap International was built originally for work with NASA with the uh, 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 
astronauts and stuff. So Marvin Sams uh, was the inventor of the Electrocap International. Uh, he, he's still around in, in, uh, in Texas, in the, in the Dallas area. So Marianne and, uh, could be using this type of cap soon. It, you know, likely it may be this cap. There's a number of different styles. There's some that are called free caps that have this uh, tubing. Uh, and when the tubes crisscross, there's a little uh, electrode clasp there that, that's called the free cap uh, that uses saline instead of gel and uh, squirt it in. A lot of different kinds. Uh, the labs uh, will end up having one that works well for them. As long as it gets the placements properly, it works real well. Uh, some labs are using dry sensor as well. Uh, the the yeah. uh, kind of a helmet that sets on with dry sensor uh, placed to each of the sites. Now, Marianne, um, the downside is you may get some uh, gunk in your hair and you got to brush it out. It's a not a paste it's a gel it's a salty gel and yeah. they they use a little plastic flat tipped needle to squirt it in there so when you see this needle coming out that kind of freaks people out i wish it had a better presentation but all they're doing is titrating yeah. uh gel into those holes so there's a connection yeah. so did yeah, he say he had a brain injury or is this is he was just doing this for focus uh, he, yeah, he's, he's doing it for focus, yeah. He's doing this for peak performance. I you know, and, and again, the higher performance you want to have, the more likely you are to need tune-ups. You know, it's like like the cars in Indianapolis 500. They, they don't go every 500,000 miles for uh, some engine tune-up. They, uh, they're, they're tuned to sometimes uh, do a few laps and change the tuning. As a quarterback, uh, he's got to have a laser-like attention and it can't lapse. You can't do two or three plays fine and then kind of go into the ADDs out yeah. in the ozone and, and you know, th throw a floater to the other team. So, uh, But just he, like your sister, Dr. Mary Tracy said, you got to get a, a, a brain map, a 19 channel. That's what this quarterback's wife was saying. So whether you're a quarterback or, you know, you're Marianne, you get, you get the uh, scan to kind of get a lay of the land to measure the chemical energy that's coming off of the brain against a quote unquote normative database. Did I say that right, Jay? We end up having um, uh, enough time in the eyes open and enough time in the eyes closed. In a hospital, they usually have it almost all eyes closed with a few brief eye openings, but it's for a different purpose. Uh, they're looking to diagnose epilepsy or encephalopathy. Uh, we're we're looking to see how to set up the training for you. So an extended period of eyes open, an extended period of eyes closed, and uh, it, usually we try to meet a minimum medical guideline of 20 minutes of total EEG recording time, uh, so that if there's a transient that's going to happen, we have a good chance of actually catching it. As an example, in a known epileptic, in a 20 minute study, you have just a little over 50 percent chance of catching one of those transients. Oh, so okay. you've, you've got to have that extended time doing the lead does that uh does it interfere with your brain activity at all or does it just record no this is it's no more invasive than a stethoscope oh, it, you know a stethoscope re, you know listens to to sound well we we have sensitive electrodes up here that are they're sensing electricity inside of your head and we're amplifying it so we're not sending electricity in, we're measuring uh, the electricity that's in there from the surface. So we're not passing, currents aren't going from one electrode site to another, and they're not going in one ear and out the other or anything like that. So uh, the, what we have here is, is essentially like a, a bunch of stethoscopes, but instead of for sound, this is for electrical activity. And, and and I want to ask you, even after, um, you know, seven months has passed, it will still be able to detect where the deregulation is in my brain. Is that what we're going for? Yeah, it'll see where you are now. Uh, and we can't say how bad it may have been uh, based on what we see now, but we'll see what's going on now. And uh, you can probably still sense that there's some things you could work on. It'll be spotted. And we'll be able to design 
uh, neurofeedback protocols to bring those specific locations back online. Uh, um, an area that has ischemia uh, will have a slow edge of alpha. We can suppress that and train up the upper frequencies in the 11, 12, 13, 14 hertz range and gently activate the area, not overactivate it. And that gentle activation will open up the blood vessels in the area so the ischemia can be treated. Um, but we have to spot it first, you know, and design the montage that's going to get the electrodes uh, activity measured properly so we can feed it back. So this could help reduce fa the fatigue that I live with. Yeah, the, the getting rid of the ischemia is going to give you a full uh, function back in those, those areas. Jay, so, if, Mar if Marianne got this 19 channel scan two years ago and she had a baseline and she did this scan again now, would she be able to oh, see? Oh, yeah. Difference? Yeah. That, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, the likelihood of everybody getting an EG before uh, they end up having something that happens and then they need one uh, is pretty slim. Uh, but it's actually not a bad idea, especially if you're in sports because the likelihood of a head injury uh, causing a change, having a baseline ends up being very, very useful. So uh, I, I would uh, suggest, especially for high level athletes, uh, uh, getting, uh, getting a baseline before you need one. Uh, or, or motorcyclists. Yeah, motorcyclists do have sent to have accidents once in a while. You know, my head on motorcycle car crash, you know, as an example. Um, so, all right. all right, we got 20 seconds left. Let's see what else we got here. And steady and fight or flight moments like football games, especially the intense endings. I think it gives you a level up. Right now, in a new system, there have been some moments where my instincts have not been trained yet quite where I want them. And so I've had to learn from a couple of mistakes and then started to correct that. That was, that was, uh, Kirk Cousins. Well, it, he'll promote some interest in the field because he's a pro athlete and, you know, his, and, and it was nicely produced. There's no real depth in it. Sometimes all you need is a little uh, gloss over it to bring interest and uh, it'll probably do that. Well, everybody's got ADHD now, Jay. So what? Everybody has ADHD now. Whatever the problem joke. is, it's ADHD. It was a joke. I said, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay, got it. Oh, Mary, Mary, <laughs> you just, I know, I'm, <laughs> I better get my uh, noodle checked. Mary, Mary Ann Todd, thank you so much for hanging around and checking out Kirk Cousins with us.